listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Carolla. Love Line, Coast to Coast. Hey, everybody, Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Here, here. And I'm not giving you the phone number Actually, because uh, this I'm not is, here, here. Yeah, this yeah. is the best of tonight. Which is uh, not necessarily the best of this show. No, it's the best for us, though. Which still isn't that good. <laughs> no, no, I mean, the best circumstance for us. No, this is the best of. Yeah, we're not here, though. That's right. Right. Yeah, that's so we don't care. So we're probably listening. Yeah. I may no. be drunk. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. All right. So uh, enjoy the uh, best of Love Line. Hey, everybody. Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. You know, it's really 11 o'clock. I know it feels that way, doesn't it? Or 10 o'clock. No, I'm saying it's really 11 o'clock. Yeah. I just thought I'd do it in a flight, an inflection that confused you. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Success. Got to uh, spring forward and uh, fall back. Mm -hmm. I hate the spring forward part. Yeah. I could use an extra hour every couple of days. Yeah. If you take one away, I'm, I'm <clears throat> effed. I know. I got up this morning at uh, 10.30 in the morning. Uh, and uh, my wife d lowered that uh, hammer. You know, it's like, it's really 11.30. Uh, oh, my God. Day's over. It's gone. But it's light. It's going to be light. It's going to be light forever. Hey, now, is this only going on on the West Coast, by the way? No. They doing this all over? What about, like, Arizona? Arizona is, doesn't do it. Yeah. Arizona place doesn't do it. Basically. I'm moving to Arizona. Samantha? What? Ooh, Samantha? Yeah. What's going on? Um, I had a question, like, if you have, like, anal sex, like, does that, like, if he, like, finishes inside of you, will that, like, hurt your organs? Harden your organs? No, hurt. Hurt your organs. Hurting. Mm -hmm. uh, hurting your organs, eh? Hey? Oh, will that be, like, hurting your organs? Mm -hmm. Uh, the... Fluid he sticks in you could have infectious material in it, right? Like AIDS and hepatitis. And, yeah. And that's how it hurts your hurting your organs. I and um, I have another question. Yeah. Um, like, what else can I use for birth control? Because I can't take the birth control pill. Why can't you? Um, because I have a whole bunch of autoimmune diseases, um, and I can't take it because of my other medicine. What's your other medicine? Um, I take like um a whole bunch like I take Ritalin uh -huh. and I take Neurotin uh -huh. and Prevacid and Concerta. Well, Concerta and Ritalin are same Yeah, thing. keep going. And Celsept and um Celebrex. Um, uh, and That's not enough for her sleeping. What? Well, all she's mentioned other than aspirin basically is and it is psychiatric medicine. Yeah. So it doesn't sound like anything that should prevent you from taking the pill. Those are autoimmune? No. That's just well, the, the aspirins, the, she might have some joint complaints. But what do they think? You just have a lot of joint pain, right? Um, I have arthritis, and I've, um, I have a drug disease called Bichette's. And it, like, um, affects, like, it's like, has vascular. Yeah, no, I know, it, I, know, I know what Bichette's is. Well, what? if you're on Bichette's, Bichette's, though, you're on salicyclic acid, right, and, and Celebrex. Yeah. Disalcid. You're on disalcid and, and uh, yeah. celebrate. Are you having anal sex with the Bichettes? <laughs> not with Bichettes. With my boyfriend. His name's not Bichette. Yeah. Not not a great idea if you have Bichettes, right? Because it is it, part of Bichettes is a gastrointestinal disease, right? Um. No, it's just Bichettes like, is a gastrointestinal disease, Samantha. That's part of it. Okay. Well, that's some of the facts of it. All right. And so, putting well, anal how, how old's your boyfriend? Sixteen. Hold on a second. You know, I'm kind of torn. On one hand, it's like, well, she's 15. She's in a weakened state. She's having this crazy anal sex. And the other, the other uh, side of me thinks, well, she's getting her kicks in before the whole S house comes down. No, I, I, no? I, I have to really question the Bichette's diagnosis. I hate to say really? it. This is this well, how sounds, would she know? I know she doesn't, but it sounds so psychiatric, this whole thing. And Bichette's a very, unless it's overt and sort of... Uh, you know, right, well, biopsy on. proven, it's a very vague illness. Samantha? Um, yeah. Hold on. Um, there you, go. you ever you ever get abused? Oh, yeah. Um, no, but I was raped a while back. Yeah, okay. How, how long ago? 
Um, I was raped once when I was six and twice when I was twelve. Okay, that would be abuse, huh? Right? Who raped you when you were six? Uh, my stepbrother. Good times. How old is he? How old? He was three months younger than me. He's five? No, yeah, he was three. Well, he was six, but three months younger. Oh, my God. I mean, that means that things are really a mess in your home. Basically. Oh, my uh. God. And then, listen, that, uh, the whole Bichette thing, again, I, I have to wonder. I've had, huh? I really, I've had, look, I'm saying that your big, your big thing is psychiatric, <laughs> right? That's mostly where your symptoms are. Mm, no, it's mostly Bichette's. But, okay. Well, you're on one medicine for Bichette's, and you're on about nine medicines for psychiatric conditions. Mm, uh, most of them are for arthritis and for my stomach medicines. Not be you, you gave us seven medicines, and six of them. Well, two, were, two of them with were, were from the for the Bichette's, the Prevacid and the the Celebrex. Right. Well, Neuron for my RSD. Neuron for my RSD and Topamax is for my headaches. Never. No, seen okay. Well. Listen, all right, where do you get all this stuff? Where? What do you mean? Like well, all my medicine? I mean, I mean, are you able to go to school? Yeah. You just I go to school. You take this medicine every day? Yeah, I take it in the morning usually. And by RSD, you mean re reflex sympathetic dystrophy? Mm-hmm. Where do you have that? I have my ankles. Both ankles? Yeah. No. Ver okay. says no. Okay, but that's uh, just... All right, well, anyway, listen, Samantha. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm glad you have a boy a boyfriend with all this uh, going on. Yeah. And uh, I'm not so excited about the anal sex. Uh-uh. But then the abuse pattern, that's maybe the only way she experienced it, uh -huh. sexually. Okay, so uh, he, he's got to use condoms, then, if you can't take, if you can't get on well, the birth yeah. control pill. And you still have all not right. said, you mentioned anything that would prevent you from being on the birth control pill, unless as part of your brachettes or as part of, I can't hear, I can't think of any of the medicines you're taking that would prevent you from taking them. That there's some sort of hypercoagulable state, which sometimes happens. Well, maybe there maybe there are doctors like, listen, you're taking 175 pills a day already. You're going <laughs> to choke if I give you one more. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, what the hell happened well, there? Well, I mean, you know, the, the, she's basically on she's on a mood stabilizer, a stimulant, and a pain pill, Neurontin, that's also a mood stabilizer. I gotta get some of that. You know, she's on all these segments, but right. not, and then she thinks they're for physical things. But the physical, this is what you were talking about earlier. The women, when they were severely traumatized, everything goes inside and manifests physically. Yeah. This is the old hysteria thing. This is what Freud was used to write about. Yeah. And then in in those days, he thought that the sexual abuse that they were telling about was fantasized. Right. Now we know this is what goes on all the time. Yeah. They didn't yeah. want to believe that happened back then. Wasn't Freud up to uh, no good himself? No, he was like a little cocaine. All right. Oh, nothing wrong with a little blow. You burn in the midnight oil. You're writing those papers. You know what I mean? Yeah, good times. Eshwan? Right. Hello? Eshan. Eshan? Esham? Esham. 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 What kind of name is that? Actually, it's one of the names of my favorite rappers. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm down with Esham. Esham the Unholy? Yeah. Down with Psychopathic Records? I That's see. my man. ICP? I, I, I played a Esham the Unholy at my wedding. Did you really? <laughs> yep. The hell out of her it, butthole, uh, man. <laughs> yep, we, we played that while <laughs> we were that? saying our vows. Wait a minute, I want to hear that again. That was the insane clown posse. I like the hell out of her butthole, man. <laughs> Yeah, we I heard played that when that was uh, Dr. Shaggy. Uh -huh. We played uh, ICP at the wedding too. Did you really? Yeah. Your wedding? Ishan the Unholy. That's all we played. I saw guys there in a Mexican uh, wrestling max. Was that there. song "I Need a Freak"? That you? Wow! Yeah. Oh my God! Somebody hold the phones! I can't believe that. Yeah, I'm kind of disappointed that you had a show down here tonight, and I kind of missed it. In my all right, here we go. What's uh, up? All right, well, uh, on the 31st of Halloween, Halloween night, my, one of my juggalo homies had a Halloween party, and uh, his father, this uh, guy that his father worked with, um, came and has just dropped his stepdaughter off. At this Halloween party, me and his stepdaughter kind of, like, started hanging out or whatever. We started talking, and uh, we almost hooked up, but we didn't because it was her first time and she was shy. Two hours later, I found out she's 13. And you're 18. Now, yeah, but I was 17 at the time, so I was like, thank God it didn't happen. You know what the hell out of her butthole, man. That's right. <laughs> You're right. That's how but, a gigolo um, would approach it. <laughs> Juggalo. Juggalo. Thank you. Juggalo. But, um, yeah, so it was like, after the party was over, I gave her a number, and I was just like, call me, not expecting her, not actually expecting her to call me. Well, she's probably enamored, right? An older guy's into her. She could right, her right. Ready. So, come to find out, like, she was trying to call me for a while, and I just didn't know, because, like, 
my phone had got cut off and then I was at night school. So then we actually did start talking and we talked for a while and then like I moved into January and for the whole month of February I didn't have a phone and we started talking again. <laughs> uh, communication problems. Yeah. What's the question, Nishan? All right. Um, my question is, should I have kept it going after the fact? Because it's like now she's telling me that she, like, she's in love with me and that she actually and tell her, tell her to call you. She's so good at returning your calls. Call you when she's 18. Yeah, that's it. It's a bad sign when you work in uh, phone cut off and night school. Yeah. In the same sentence. Yeah. That means that uh, things aren't going according to plan. Uh, but he's 18. Uh, well, plenty, plenty of time. time. Yeah. I wasn't doing anything at 18. No doubt. I was doing less than nothing at 18. I was doing minus. So when I started doing stuff at 19, it didn't even register because I was just paying off what I didn't do when yeah. I was 18. Yeah. All right, Ishan is uh, Isham. Yeah. yeah, he's fine. Yeah. Oh, he's, but yeah. then no dating her. Yeah, yeah. She's 13. Sandra? Yeah. You're 17? Yes. What's up? Well, here's the situation. Um, I've been with my boyfriend for almost two years now. And um, we used to have sex quite often, but it seems to me now that lately he has been less into it. What does is, what is very often seem? Excuse me? What is less often? What, what, how often were you doing it before? Like, you know, like rabbits, twice, twice a day. You twice know. a day. And what are you doing now? Now it's like whenever possible, really. Which is know. how often? Mm, let's say three times a week. Four and, times and is there four times a week? And is is he getting busy? Are there things to keep him from? Yeah, he has school. He goes to school and stuff. But well, you said whenever possible. Yeah, the thing is, it's just like when, it, like for example, he had spring break all week this week. Yeah. And on Friday night at like ten o'clock, he was ready for bed, and it, he's had spring break the whole week. He didn't do anything, so. He was too tired to have sex, and I just don't really understand. How old is he? What? How old is he? 21. Well, maybe he, you know, banged so many drunken broads during spring break no, that he just no, no. didn't have any left. So That's probably what it was. No. You're worrying too much, baby. Really? Yeah. He'd, uh, he'd been blown dry. <sighs> you know what I'm saying? Are you hot? Well, I, uh, I have 32 double D. I'm 125, blonde hair. <laughs> oh, sorry, Drew. It's a good thing you're wearing your glasses, not your contacts tonight, though, huh? What? Yeah, you just, uh, wipe yourself off with uh, Lycus's, uh fat guy shawl. <laughs> yeah. But I, I mm-hmm. Hmm? Yeah. You're hot, though, aren't you? Well, I don't think, yeah, I don't think I'm... Not, I think I'm good looking. Mm -hmm. That's right. why I'm, I'm perplexed. Why? Yeah, see, this is like, it's like can't a figure out yeah. why a man would not want to bone you all, all the time. All right, the time. There we go. Well, why aren't you all over me all the time? I mm -hmm. would be. Yeah, exactly. That's right. So it's but, normal. but, but, after banging the bejesus uh, out of you for a, a couple of years straight, yeah, I would. There would be nights when I would be tired and I would go to bed. And he's sort of falling into a, let's call it a, a, a rhythm that is consistent with normal physiology. Yeah. What you guys were doing before, not many guys could maintain very long. Mm -hmm. yeah. And al he's, you're already twice the average here. You're, you're a thousand percent, wait. 32. 200 percent. 32 double D? Yeah. That's nice, because that's a small back and a big cup. So yeah, my boobs are large. <laughs> They're big, eh? How about the areola? The areola? Yeah. Uh, it's okay. What do you mean, okay? It's, it's good size. It's not like, like, you know, those porno ones where they're disc size right. or anything. Porno ones. <laughs> they're healthy breasts. Healthy. Yeah. 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 Tight, tight ass? Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. okay. I work out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I like when, like, 17 year olds working out, like, it makes a difference. Hey, right? right? It work out. It's like, yeah, you No, I, I keep healthy. All right, baby doll. Look, mm -hmm. he's fine. Okay. He's fine. You, you, this is uh, this is about you being a little bit insecure. Really? You yeah, so? you're being a little insecure. Okay. You gotta just relax a little. Now, if it if it starts really becoming a problem, then call us back. Yeah, four but, times a week well, is. My, my question has been like a lot lately. What has been? That he hasn't wanted. You mean like two days in a like row? I wouldn't have called you. No, like um, a couple weeks in a row. Where, Without, with nothing, two weeks in a row. Where half the time he doesn't want to. 
Yeah, but you want well, to. Let's interpret that. Day. Two weeks in a row, we're half the time. Well, <laughs> that you, means every you, other day he wants to. You want to do it every day, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you guys, you guys don't live together, do you? No, we don't. Hey, you see each other every day? Um, no. Well, yeah, kind of. All right, all right. Well, listen. Uh, give give the guy his space okay. a little bit. I mean, don't don't. Here's here's what I'm saying. Ladies, when you don't want to do it with us, we don't all, all of a sudden feel fat or unattractive. Right. We don't get into that. We just get angry. We get angry, <laughs> and then we go for the vengeance whack. Oh, yes. But we don't get into that stuff where she thinks I'm unattractive. Or, no, you yeah. just get the feeling of, like, eh, she don't want it. Or you're not she, not into me anymore. Yeah, we, yeah. you don't get into that. No. You just get that I want some, she don't want none, yeah. and she's not in the mood. And and we don't wouldn't treat it any different than like if we said, Look, let's go out to dinner. I want to go out and get a yeah. steak. I right. want to go out and get a steak tonight. Right. Nah, nah, I don't, nah, 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 I don't want a steak. Let's go max in. Oh, how dare you? She doesn't like me anymore. Oh. I must be fat. She's not attractive. She thinks I'm fat. <laughs> she notices she's yeah, yeah. yeah. She's trying to send me a message. Yeah, she's she's sending me a message via via the free holy <laughs> pipeline. It's like no, she just doesn't want that, and guys understand that very clearly. Yeah. And women get freaked out. But four times a week, he's still doing. It. I, I like the way she said. For the last two weeks, he hasn't wanted it half the time. <laughs> that means every other day, they were. Uh, no, yeah, it just. Listen, he's settling into his rhythm. All right. Yeah, right? and God knows, with another one, maybe, maybe his rhythm would have been one a week. Right. With her, it's four times a week. That's fine. Are we taking an early break. What are you doing? No, I'm just looking at the clock, and you know, yeah. I got these smoke time and stuff. Oh, I should. Uh, Thirty-two double D though. That's, did I not? Did I peg that? Great, true, true. Knew it. Kim. Yeah. You're twenty-one. I am. What's up? Okay, I have a friend, and like we have like a lot of the same friends. So I know like a lot of people that she's slept with, and all these guys keep telling me that like she stinks down there, mm -hmm. and that she doesn't wash with soap. Like one of them has taken a shower with her before, and like he said, that, like she doesn't wash with soap. What does she use? I have. She said that it stinks when she washes with soap. Is what he told me. Well, I mean, when he she puts the bar up there and then uses the rope to right. yank it out. You exactly, mean exactly? That's what I'm saying. No, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You mean soap on her skin anywhere? No, like on, on her, her like, vagina. Straw. Right, exactly. Well, maybe it stings now because she has an infection and that's why she stinks. Right, and like I like some of the I don't really know how to like tell her this, and they tell me to tell her. They say like because I'm her friend that I should tell her. But I don't really know how to, like, bring that up to, like, you know, your friend. You're like, hey, by the way, like, you know, you stink. I, I really don't know how to go about saying that. Well, uh, how, do you ever, uh, you ever see her situations where she's undressed or anything or, like or that? Or talk about, you know, pap smears, going to the doctor, or anything like that? Um, yeah. All right. I, I don't. So you really what you want to do, what you really ultimately what you want to do is get her in for a pelvic exam. Right. Because this is probably an infection, and so you got to sort of be talking about health care and health maintenance, and right. you know, cervical cancer and warts and all those good things, and uh, encourage her to get checked out. Okay. Yeah. yeah. She and believe me, whenever you come at her with this, she's coming back at you with something. Oh, I know. That's what that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, if, but I mean, oh, and you know what else? A guy, one of the guys that she was um, that she was sleeping with, actually told her that like she's done, and she still hasn't done anything about it. Well, how do you know? How do I know that he told her? How do you know she hasn't done anything about it? Because she still stinks, because I keep hearing that she still stinks. Well, maybe she's working on it. How many of your friends get to plow uh, your other friend? <laughs> a lot of them, actually. Well, I'd like to join the circle. Wow. Yeah. I mean, by the way... Uh, and by the way, hasn't the word spread around to these uh, retards that she's got uh, exactly. b bad... Hey, bad hey listen, and by the way, that means all those guys are infected with this bacteria. Possibly. I, no, what? certainly. They know that she stinks, and they keep like sleeping with her. Wait, Kim, Kim, that She's means all the guys. <laughs> that's mean all the guys need antibiotics also. Well, maybe. Almost certainly. Wow. Well. That's true, and that's why she keep. Maybe she keeps getting it treated, and these guys keep giving it back to her. How many? How many guys are we talking about, Kim? I'd say like thirty. I mean, Whoa. how many guys at one time? How many of your friends? No. Listen, how many, how many at friends? one time? Well, there, she's like, I know there's like, I don't know. All right, well, listen, Kim. Well, she's got some, she needs okay. some health maintenance. Kim, right? how old is she? Um, I think she's 21. Mm. All right. Wait, is she really a good friend of yours? She seems like she's got some issues this year. Um, she's not like a really good friend of mine, but like, I, I know her. All right, you don't know her. Yeah, who cares? And butt out. She's not a good friend. She's not a really good friend, but I know her. Mm, she's seen her on the campus. What campus? Mount Sac. Really? 
Check it out. Check it out. Mount Sac. Uh -huh. Ask. Mount Sac always Five. cracks me up. It's actually a good school. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah. What college? Do you go to college? Um. Yeah. What college? I'm not telling you. Mount Sac. What? Mount Sac. Mount Sac. Yeah. No. I go to. Is that? I go to community college. Your junior college. Yeah. Which community college? Oh. Uh, um. I really would rather not say. All right, but it's not Mount Sac. No. All it's right. right up there with uh, that area, so that's why I said that. Yeah, she's a JC girl. That's the good. That's the good JC out there. She doesn't go to the good one. <laughs> but listen, ladies, stop stop fighting amongst each other. You don't have to. You don't have to tell this poor girl anything. I mean, she's not really friends with her. She shouldn't have to broach this topic, should she, Drew? It'd be nice if she would. This kid need. This woman needs some help. Yeah, but she, she already needs... had one of the guys tell her she didn't do anything. I don't know, but in this thirty guys. This is where my crotch sniffing dogs would really come in handy. Who knows what all these folks are passing around amongst them? Ah, <laughs> we're married. What do we care? I found out the beagle is the most sensitive nose amongst the canines. So really? It adds to the comedy of the whole thing too, doesn't beagle it? Beagle sniffing the crotch. Snoopy? Yeah. Yeah. Why do dogs smell their own ass if uh, they're that sensitive? Because it, it's it's just like anything Maybe else. Maybe it smells like a meatball sandwich to them or something. <laughs> Well, you know, <laughs> I think by it's it, it their sensitivity of smell is so profound that's that, what I'm that saying. horrible things come around the other side and ass starts smelling like lilacs, and roses. It, well, and you know what it is. You know what's interesting too, which is uh, knowing what you're smelling makes it worse or better. No, ass smells like ass. No, no, yes, yes. Okay, <laughs> Drew's right. Ass <laughs> smells like ass. Everybody. All right, we'll be back. Hey everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. All right, let's see. Let's get back to the phones uh, here. What do you say there, buddy? You. Bread and butter. Don't drop trout, Drew. Hey, this is close to dropping trout. Speaking of dropping trout, i got a little sack smell going on. Yeah, tonight. what's with the... I've never seen it with short pants on before. Well, you know what the kids are calling them? They're just calling them shorts now, Drew. No, I know, but I wanted to, I wanted to sort of communicate... I know you know them as knickers. Yeah, but they weren't knickers, and they weren't uh, a bathing suit, and they weren't uh, yeah shorts. I'm wearing shorts, shorts, and I've never seen shorts before. Well, I'll tell you what. I usually uh, my routine. Yeah. Is uh, scare me now with something. Go ahead. I, my routine is, I. It's it's unfair to call what I do working out. I exercise for about twenty minutes, uh, like a prisoner would, with a heavy bag. No, no, I don't. That's like down in my garage, and you know, I'm just like so my hands are too screwed up oh. to do that too much oh. anyway. Thank I think, you. I think doing that regularly. No, no. I mean, no. I, I, you're talking about boxing. Yeah. Yeah. But that's just once a week with a guy. Other than that, I just skip a little rope in my living uh, room. And that's what you did tonight. Just break a sweat. In your shorts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I usually start my workout about uh, uh, my exercise <laughs> about uh, twelve, about nine oh five. Yeah. And I skip rope like a maniac for about 20 minutes. And then I jump in the shower. Mm. And I'm on the road by 9.34. And it only takes me 23 minutes to get here. So i got plenty of time. But uh, tonight ran a little long. Didn't oh, have time yeah. for the shower. Uh, <laughs> so I just came over here. Got it. I noticed I got a little sack scent going. Oh, God. I haven't yet uh, encountered it. But, I get uh, that. I don't I don't get the under-the-arm thing going. But yeah, I, I will get the sack thing going. I have noticed that. How many before. hobo power got going tonight? Uh, just, just a couple? Boring bit. I, made, I got uh -huh. uh, I got a, I got I got about uh about, about, about six, six and Ooh, a half. I may be able to fight back tonight. Oh no, Drew. Oh, yeah. Not with oh, the gas. Yeah. Jenny? Yeah. You are twenty four? Yes. What's up? Um, well let's see. I've been with my boyfriend for about ten months. Um a little over ten months and when we first got together the sex was incredible and amazing and everything. But I had a pregnancy scare and then I had another one. And then I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to get on birth control, and hopefully that will get me over my funk because I was not wanting to have sex at all. Because for fear of pregnancy. Well, basically for the fear of pregnancy, but I w not only that, but I was just not feeling turned on anymore. I wasn't feeling it. Why? Arrived. I just, I don't, I, I don't know. That's why I'm, you know, did, having did, problems. Did something else happen? Did you, oh, what was, what's the, did you start birth control? Uh, no, I have not started birth control. Um, but re the most recent episode where we try, you know, we try to make love, um, 
it, you know, it started out fine and everything, but within a minute and a half, I started to close up to the point where he couldn't even penetrate me anymore. Because you were so like, nervous. Yeah, well, nervous. I've been with him 10 months. No, but ner you're, as you said, worried about, yeah, anxious something. about the possibility of a pregnancy. Of you closed life. up around him like a dog, or was he uh, not Thank in you yet? Really? No, that was, and then it, get, you know, it got to the point where, you know, I told him to pull out, you know, because it was so painful, and you know, have me relax a second. But then he couldn't even enter me anymore. Ooh, ooh. And that's, and that's, it's progressively become to that extreme over the past several months. And we, I mean, and it's like then the fear of that kind of stuff happening keeps me from wanting to have sex, but. Wow. You know, it's not that I don't feel sexually attractive. It's not right. that my boyfriend sexually attractive. All right, quiet know. down. Did uh, any, you ever get abused or anything? Me? No, never. Mm -mm. This is this is uh, sort of what vaginismus is. It can be sort right. of a learned behavior that gets going, and it has to be kind of unlearned, just like fear of flying or other kinds of phobic reactions. How do we do it? Uh, graduated, loose sight, well, cylinder? Well, there is. That's what some people advocate. Yeah. But I would hope that in this case you could just learn to sort of ease into it if your boyfriend is understanding and takes this slow and spends a few days sort of working on this that you'll kind of relax about it but one of the things you need to do to be realistically reassured is to be on birth control right yeah well and that's well, first order business it, um you know we've you know and the easy part would be besides me just getting on you know birth control would be for him to use a condom but he's catholic and a lot of Catholics don't believe in birth control, and that's become an issue with him. And so that's kind of unfair that I'm the one that has to be on birth control. It's okay but for you. Hold on that a is second. bizarre Let me talk about thinking. Right, this Wait this a story needs to be more. She's but, angry. Yeah. Because she said, well, the easy way for us yeah. to do it would be for him yeah, of course. to do this, but he's not going to do this. Well, let's and pick him I apart for a second. That. Think about his psyche. What? Uh, listen, I'm not going to do. I'm not going to collude with the devil, but. You, you go ahead, because you're already kind of soiled, so you, you enjoy your relationship with the devil here. Plus, there's nothing in the uh, good book that says anything about cornholing, oh. and uh, certainly we could do that. Yeah. Hey, Jenny? Yes. Yeah, hold on a second. You know what we do a lot of uh, with uh, religious folks on this show, or whenever we talk about religion? We go, oh, this guy's, this guy's a hypocrite, and this guy's stupid because he says th that he doesn't want to do this. But yet he does that. Most religions, you got to be half retarded to be into in the first place. Who are we kidding? What kind of pie in the sky crap is this? You know what I mean? Oh you're, of course you're an idiot. Basing your life on some old book, some old uh, bearded uh, Jews wrote a million years ago, and you're uh, you're looking looking up toward the heavens every but five just seconds. Just remember, humans need some of this. I know they're stupid. That's why they need it. Go ahead, hey Jenny. Yeah. Yeah, they need it. They need, you need the Easter Bunny when you're when you're five. I think you know to really fill out our impression of uh, Jenny, you, you need to see her. You know what I mean? They were, her yeah. voice sounds so reasonable. Yeah, I think we're missing something. What's up with this guy? We don't trust him now. Well, he's a he's a great guy. You know, he doesn't even try to attempt to turn me on or have sex with me, or he really doesn't even mention it anymore because he knows I have a lot of hangups. Oh, what's and what are your hangups? I just don't feel like having sex. Well, because... It's not a lot of hang-ups. That's one I big hang-up that is caused from something else, and you didn't give us any kind of answer there. Well, um, honestly, I don't... I, I just... There was just a point in our relationship where I just did not feel, you know, like I wanted to have sex with him anymore. Uh, you're angry but, at this guy. And you're done with him. You're done. You're done with this guy. Jenny, what are you talking about? He's supposed to be nice and a great guy. Yeah. And maybe he is, but you're just not into him anymore. Yeah. yeah. You're not into this and guy. And then another thing that's been worrying me is that I've been having extreme fantasies and thinking a lot about other men. And yeah, right. you're oh, done. Jenny, so please. What, you're done. What, why do you have to present the pie in the sky? Why don't you just be honest with yourself about how you're feeling and... Uh, you should be into this guy, but you're not. Your body's telling you you're not, and you're not. It's fine. It's great. You want a bad boy. That's what being 24 is all about. <laughs> you want a you want a bad boy agnostic. <laughs> we've <laughs> we've talked about this. We've we, you know we've we haven't broken up over this, but we've talked about this. And I told him that you know it's just not there for me anymore. And then you know we spend some time apart and stuff, and you know, and then we start kind of hanging out again and no sex. I mean, well, you're right. done, Jenny. You're She's just done. You're done, done, done. Listen to your body, for God's sakes. Your vagina's trying to kick this guy out. 
Yes. He's evicting his penis from your premises. To the curb, yes. True. Get down with the curb talk. Blah. <laughs> Jenny? Yes. You're 24? Yes, I am. What's the problem, baby doll? Well, I just need some advice. I've been going to a strip club with some friends of mine for about a year and a half, mm. and I've become friends with a dancer at this club. She initiated an outside friendship. We've hung out a few times. She initiated it. I'm sorry, what? She initiated it. Yes, she did. How did she do that? Well, she just started asking me if we wanted to go out for dinner, want, you know, we go see movies. And the other day she started being intimate with me and I, I backed off. I really like this girl, but I don't know if she's into this for money or if she really likes me. Hmm. And no. I'm really not, not sure it. how to... What do you mean, into it for me. money? How much money do you have? I'm, I'm pretty well off. I have a, I have a nice job. Now, that means uh, that means nine fifty an hour to one of our clients. Um, actually, I make I make ten an hour. Ten yeah, an yeah hour. but she makes hundreds an hour. <laughs> All right, hold on a second. <laughs> ten bucks an hour is not uh, not well off. Our phone screeners laugh at ten dollars an hour. Oh, maybe not. More coffee, by the way. <laughs> uh, the, ten bucks an hour. Is, is strippers ain't going after you like you're some uh, fat Arab sultan or something that they're just going to try funny? to soak for their money. This, this for you and I with the low self-esteem. It's so hard yeah. to understand these people. I'm, I'm so attractive. I mean, you write them, it's like, mm, how, how, how? And the, it's like the people that try out for uh, American uh, Idol. It's like, yeah. you, you, don't you hear how you sing? That, she, uh, they're amazing. She sees me pull up in that uh, 89 Ford Festiva and uh, sees the keys jingling to the one-bedroom apartment off the interstate, and she sees uh, money, dollar signs in her eyes, Drew. Know what I'm saying? When she sees the generic Cheerios in the cupboard, that's when she goes for the jugular. <laughs> <laughs> bucks an hour. She's trying to soak her for her money. This chick makes 10 bucks every 10 seconds when she's up on stage. That's for right. Christ's sake. Jessica. Um, hi. No, no. Oh, wrong one. Sorry, Jenny. Jenny. I got the J screwed up. Jenny? Yes. First off, Hello? yeah, what's that? What's the matter with you? You sound like a half a man. You angry? Half a man. You just sound angry. Uh, no, actually, um, I'm okay. Okay, why can't you trust... Okay, she initiates wanting to hang out with you. You go out to some movies. You, you go out for some meals. Then uh, she's attracted to you. She tries to put a move on you. You're wondering that she's if she's just going after you for your money, but you don't have any money. I just I, don't, I I didn't know what to expect. Well, who makes more money, you or her? Most likely her. Okay, so why is she going after you for your money when you don't really make any What's money? What's the move she's made on you? Half now. Well, she's she's touched me. She's tried she's tried kissing me. Right. Okay. That's, that's as far as it's gone. Okay, right. what's up with you, baby? You, you're you lesbian, right? I'm sorry, what? Are you a lesbian? Yes, I am. Are you, uh, are you, you okay? Lesbian. Are you okay? Were you ever abused? No, no abuse. Um, I have, my parents are divorced, but they get along, and I've, I've had a happy life so far. Mm-hmm. Boy, you sound like you've uh, been through the ringer a couple times. Nothing? No. Everything's uh, good? I, I did have... Well, I, I should have maybe I should have mentioned this. I have had a relationship with with a dancer before, and it was very very bad. Mm -hmm. and she uh, back then you were making eight seventy five an hour, but she won one after you, right? And by the way, people that have happy lives don't pick those kinds of people to be involved with. Yeah. Well, anyway, Jenny, it just sounds uh, sounds like you're in a little bit of pain, or you don't trust people, or you don't like people, or you feel uncomfortable in your own skin, or something. Wow, okay. All right. But anyway, look, if she likes you and you like her, then have uh, have a good time. But what is this business of her seeking out strippers? And... I, I, I don't know. Jenny, there's something There's something going on with you. There's something up. And this chick's a stripper, and she's probably and she's a lesbian or bisexual. She's probably got a little energy, and she's going to be a little chaotic, so don't expect a long and smooth journey with her. Hey! 
Hey, Bob Savinola. Have a lot of that. Well, all our girls are part lesbian. Well, Bob Savinola, if you make more than 10 bucks an hour, they're coming after your purse, strings. gentlemen. <laughs> Businessman's alone. Three o'clock, five o'clock. ATM machine. Bob was up. Uh, Jenny, stage five, stage five, two. Bob was up. Drop trap. <laughs> I didn't, know the, I didn't know the morning DJs did uh, yeah. strip club announcements. Yeah, same guy. Same guy. Nice. Right. But, Jenny, there's, right, well, there's something uh, really going on with you, Jenny. I don't know what. You're not going to tell us, but... Uh, hmm. Boy, I can hear something in her voice. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. Want to dissect? No. No. All right. She just sounds angry and sort of... It sounds like she's talking and gritting her teeth yeah. at the same time. Oh, yes. She's going to be soaked for $10 an hour. <laughs> Hold on, I can't help torturing myself. That's uh, Jenny. Oh, okay. Shannon. Yeah. I just want to see if that's before or after taxes. <laughs> Realize Jenny's bringing home like a two hundred and sixty-two fifty uh, a week, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let's take ourselves a little break. What do you say there, Jerry? Fair Keep enough. <clears throat> Oxycontin snorter, huh? Good times. When we come back. Everybody, it's Loveline, madam. That's Dr. Drew coughing into the mic. Sorry. Sorry, buddy boy. Phone. Uh, forget about that phone number. Oh. All right. You ready to rock here, Drew? Let's go. Let's go. Jamie? Yeah. You're 25? Yes. What's up? Well, I have a poem I thought you might like. I wrote it a couple nights ago, and you were on a, a weed trip tonight, so I thought you might appreciate it. All right, let's hear it. Oh, that's last night's show, but go ahead. Uh, weed, you make me. By the way, our affiliates have asked us not to point those things out. <laughs> oh. uh, All right, there you go. She did it. Oh, well, look, it's got to be. I know. Well, hold on a second. Turn the music down. Our affiliates don't want us to talk about a day delay. Nobody told me about that, by no, the way. So let's say our affiliates pointed that out to us because I never heard anything about it. Number one. Number two, it's confusing to the uh, stoners who have been listening for the last 11 minutes and never heard me talk about weed. Well, that, that's true. That's Thank you. Go ahead. We, you make me oh so happy. My thoughts slow down and a smile finally replaces a frown. A single moment lasts forever, yet time won't sit still never. It passes fast with no hesitation ever to leave behind or just forget the ones who can't stay clever. Those are the ones that give weed a bad name, play the game wrong, and make legalization take too damn long. So get high, but please, I beg you, do your right. Put down your pipe long enough to fight for the right to live the high life. Yeah, yeah that's beautiful, baby. We're going to do it. Do it smart. Stay at home. Don't be dumb. Oh, it's oh wait a minute. Wait, are you that's done? Enough. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, I thought you finished, and then you kind of <laughs> there's a coda tagged an addendum. Hey, Jamie, it, when you're when you're writing odes of love to to a cannabis at 25, not a good sign. Not a, you're going to have trouble putting this one down. Well, now it's it's one thing if you're 15 and you're in detention, and you got an hour and 45 minutes to kill, and it's a hot summer, and you're just sitting there staring at a peachy folder, and you got nothing but a ballpoint pen. That's then write Ode to Weed. It could be elaborate pictures about... Uh, or, or doodle, whatever it takes to get through the day. But if you're 25 sitting at home and doing your Ode to Weed, that's not that's, a good That's time. marijuana addiction. Marijuana addicts love pot. And when you can't stop it and you are preoccupied with it, it doesn't stop. It's a, it's an opioid effect on those people, and it is a very difficult addiction to stop. But you got talent, baby. I'll give you that. Let me... Uh, let me. You junior college? I'm sorry. Junior college? No, actually, I'm a professional. I, and I've been in sales for the last ten years. No college. <laughs> I started in telemarketing when I was sixteen. Yeah, no. I've college. been in it ever since. All right. Well, middle management, right. pay my own bills. No college. All right, no college. Yeah, okay. we got. It. Are you doing okay though? You're paying your own bills. Oh, absolutely. You're not paying someone else's bills, and then they're paying your bills. Oh no. You're paying your own. <laughs> you bet. That's big, yeah. And uh, depressed. And, and what's going on? You have uh, you have a man in your life? Oh, absolutely. You do. So you good? Him my life. Good guy. Oh yeah, been with him two years. Two years. Any kids? No. Is it, does he do? Uh, does he do a lot of drinking? No. What's he do? We smoke. That's mm -hmm. it. Marijuana. What does he do though? Does he have a job? Oh yeah, he wears carpet. Lace carpet. carpet. Well, yeah. he's a professional too. Oh. Business for himself. Brings he's got, he's got a he's got a kick kicks the. He hits but we the, keep our money he, separate. Cause what is that thing called? Yeah, it's uh, one of those neat tackers. 
the hell is it's a stretcher. Yeah, you know what they're doing with those things? They put that tackless strip around the perimeter. Yeah, yeah. Tackless. It's called tackless strip. It's got tacks in it. All right. You've never seen a strip with more tacks in it. <laughs> What's that? It's like uh, the strip is a piece of wood that's an eighth of an inch thick, and it's about an inch wide, and it comes in like three foot lengths. It's called tackless strips, and in that length, four thousand tacks, seventy five hundred tacks in there. Tackless strip, everybody. What? It's called tackless strips because you no longer have to tack the carpet down. Uh, I see. Still, could have done a better job. Probably just tack strips. That may have worked. Okay. That yeah. may have worked. That may work. Anyway, that thing uh, they use with the knee stretches the carpet over the tackless strip. All right. But anyway, Jamie sounds like uh, she's right on target. She's doing good. <laughs> See. That's fun. I'll talk to you all later. Hey, all right. Hey, uh, how about a uh, poem about uh, laying carpet? A poem about laying carpet? Yeah. Well, just yesterday, my man Shane, he laid some carpet and brought home a new game. We sat down, we played it for a long time, you see, and this is the way he and me be. We spend our nights just in front of the TV, and then after 10, we turn you on again. But that's all I had to say, really. I must go now. It's time for me to lay down my head. You see, I'm stoned now. <laughs> Freestyling, <Bye -bye>. man. <laughs> nice. Have fun. Are you call back any time. All right, bye. All right, next time. I'm going to see if she can think of something that rhymes with linoleum. <laughs> That's going to be tough. Oh, my. you got to admit, that was pretty good, That was Chris. very good. It's not like we rehearsed that, either. No. Angela? I like, it, I like it when white guys rap, and they go, every white guy raps does this. My name is Drew, and I'm here to say... I like to be a doctor each and every day. You know, they, yeah. they start with that. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. Yeah. It's the white guy. Right? Here we way. come, a truck in oh. it. Bet, Bet you wonder where, where we've been. been. <laughs> we're a team that can't be beat. Because <laughs> we're funky on our feet. <laughs> yeah. Angela. Yeah. Hi, what's going on? Yeah. 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 Um. yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> my boyfriend kind of, you know, won't go down on me. Mm -mm. Hmm. What kind of boyfriend is that? Black one. It, what? Uh, do you do that no. to your boyfriend? You do yeah. it to him. You do it to him. Yeah. Uh, do you ever think about this is sort of an aggressive move, but saying, "Hey, look, if I'm going to do this to you, if you want this to continue." I asked him before, but he says he just doesn't get into it. No, no, no. Yeah. This won't go on any longer club. unless you reciprocate. What he likes needs to be reciprocated. If he like, wants to get what he likes, he needs to provide what you like. Angela. See how that works? I'm not sure if she knows what reciprocate means. No. Okay. Who's whispering to her? That's what? her. No, yeah. somebody was whispering it's to her. Like, hey. It's the little person. Oh, kazoo? It's my little person. Oh, it's kazoo. It is kazoo. Yeah. Who are you talking does to? She, does she call you dum-dum? <laughs> what? Who are you talking to? My little sister. Okay. Why? What's she doing? She keeps... This sounds like really stupid, but she keeps hitting me. Why don't we put her on the phone here? How, how old is she? Fifteen. Fifteen. All right. She's got to sit around and hear about your oral sex problems? What? All right. Yeah, she's cool. Yeah, I know. How old's your boyfriend? Twenty-six. Oh, whoa. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with him? What's wrong with him? Nothing. He's an a-hole. He's too old for you. I... All right. Good uh, time. We can't kind of concentrate on this. I... Ugh. We have nothing but tards call this show. Almost exclusively, Drew. Your point? That's my point. Yeah. Well... Huh? You know the way... You know what I... I, I say we declare... Uh, we make tomorrow night all tard night, and I bet we get nothing but geniuses calling the show. You know what I mean? Yeah. You no, know, nothing ever works out on the yeah, show whenever yeah. I make a declaration yeah. or I ask for a certain theme or topic to the yes, show. Yes. Tomorrow night, tard night. We only want retarded questions. Do you hear me? Retarded questions or retarded people? Both. Both. All right. Michael? Yeah. Oh, well, here you go. There you go. You're 13. What's up? Uh, I got a man here that reached 50 hobo power. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Without rolling up the windows in the car or turning on the heat. He, he, he puked. He broke wind and made 50 hobo power? I am not kidding you. I threw up. You threw up? 
Yes. Oh, boy. Now, where were you? Hold on, Anderson. Yeah, we need some details. There you this, Anderson, is this, is, this is a breakthrough moment. Yeah. It's a watershed. Outside. Out of doors. He stuck his ass in my face mm -hmm. and blew the most wicked thing you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. It was like taking rotting cat poo mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and just leaving it in 100 degree heat. Yeah, and, here, and, and then opening up the bag. And, and you vomited? You vomited immediately? Yes. How much time elapsed? How much time? Yeah. From the time he broke wind to the time he vomited. We need to check the records here. Um, pretty damn quick. I'd say less than a second. What, does a, a, a gagging? or Spontaneous? A... Yeah. Spontaneous vomiting? Did something come out of your mouth? Something came out of my mouth. Did you, did all the contents of your stomach were represented? Yes, on the ground. Oh, wow. That's nice. That's nice. Well, that's true, uh, 50 hobo pounds. Yeah, that's by definition. Yeah. Now, this is wonderful. <laughs> Hobo power is a unit of stink measurement we uh, came up with uh, some years ago, actually. Yeah. Well, what was it now, Drew? A couple five, years five, ago. Was it that long ago? I was on the TV show. <laughs> Hobo power? Were we really talking about that there? Hell yes. Oh, my God. My memory Hobo power up. was, you know, year one or two of the TV show. Really? Really. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. I only said, like, two years ago. Hell. Hell no. No but, I, but I have a faint memory of talking about it on the television show. You're right. It's a unit of stink measurement. And the uh, thought is that uh, 50 hobo power is when somebody vomits. Mm -hmm. That's how you know what the stink is. Now, it could come from anything. Yeah. Well, it's, a def it's just a unit of smell, of stench. Right. It's like 50 horsepower could come from a car engine, a plane engine, or a boat engine. doesn't right. matter. It's 50 horsepower, right? That's right. Yeah. So, 50 you, hobo power. you vomit, that's 50 hobo no, power. It's, it's sort of most poetic when it's from the ass, would you say? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I know that's what you're searching for. So. One would hope, yeah. yeah. we got to take a break. Line. I'm Adam, that's uh, disgusted Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Let's get back to uh, Lorenzo. So anyway, listen, Lorenzo. Yes. Uh, so anyway, Lorenzo took exception to my... Uh, uh, we were talking at the beginning of the show where uh, uh, whereas Michael Jackson, his uh, young boy, seems to be a uh, young Hispanic kid. And uh, I was saying, uh, I think it's a little easier to get away with that in the culture. You've got a better victim over there than you do a young Japanese more, kid. or More you... likely to have a victim with that uh, with a darker but, skin. I mean, but, I You're mean, playing but, your odds. Like, here's my mean. point. Okay. Here's what I'm saying. Right. If I'm going to molest the 10-year-old, I pass by the Jew and the Japanese kid, I uh, the black kid, I go to the Mexican kid. I think I can pull it off with that kid. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe. Let me put an yeah. alternate spin on it. Maybe you're just looking for a victim. But no, I like and, the brown. And, I like and, the milky brown skin. And you're more likely to come across one of those first, just playing the numbers. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm okay. doing. Okay. All right, okay, that's what no, I'm but, doing. But yeah. okay, just, in Southern California, by the way. Okay, yeah, yeah. in no, Southern California. Listen to me just one second, okay? All right. The way that you put it, okay. I remember this. Uh, like, like I was telling you, if, I know, just now, you know, interviewing the Sewer Copeland, and um, you know, he was he asked me where I'm from. And I say from Peru. And before that, uh, um, you guys, uh, he was saying that you guys can recognize, you know, whether you know a person was abused uh, or you know has some some uh, something going on her on her childhood right. Right. through her voice. I don't know right. if you remember. You remember yeah. that? Well, we, we sure. can, we can though. We okay. Can. All right. Okay. But now, when um, Suro Coppola, you know, he asked me, ah, you know, ah, where you from? And I said, I'm from Peru. And, you know, I, he started talking to me in Spanish, and, you know, we, you know, just a, a good time. And then, you know, he said, oh, you know, you can tell by his voice that, you know, he was, you know, abused as, as a child. And then, Adam, you said, well, you know, he, he's from Peru, you know, on, on, on that country is normal. Okay, so. It's normal to have what, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, you know, I mean, it's normal you know, to be sexual Adam, abuse. You are, not, Adam, you are not an a-hole, okay? You are my guy. You know, I really like you. Well, there's a way you got that part wrong. So, you got that part very, very wrong. All right, well, let's, okay, so. David, I made right, so. your point, and uh, as I make my living off of stereotyping, please don't get in the way, because one day I will stereotype against a group other than yours, and you'll be happy that I stereotype. 
You always you see what I'm saying, but you do. You start to. You don't leave anybody out. No, including my own family. For Christ's sake, you know, so listen. I got ideas. I don't have time to research everything. Well, you were going to thank you. You were going to tell some research you've done with the Garden Grove Police. No, I I, uh, I went out with the Garden Grove uh, Police once, and uh, the guy. The guy told me he worked on, uh, I'm not going to mention the officer's name, but he worked in the uh, child services, whatever, with the molestation and the juvenile, whatever. And he said every single case he goes on is uh, Latino. And that's probably uh, most of the population of that group. So that's about 80% of it. It's not like he's working the Beverly Hills beat. But uh, I had a talk with him, and he said it's a little more uh, a little more popular in that culture, and it, uh, it's stuck. That's all. I, I think Thank I you. really think it's rural mm -hmm. or Mexico. Doesn't yeah. that And a couple generations ago where that got gone. Well, listen, you're going to live at home until you're 25. You're going to get nailed by Grandpa eventually. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's the long and the short of it. Diana? Hello? You're uh, 14? Oh, uh, yeah. You're, uh, let's see, what does S&M stand for? <laughs> Notice what um, it means. My name's Brianna. What, huh? My name's Brianna. Brianna, okay. Yeah. Oh, 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 it's, it's not Brianna. It's not Diana, like it says there. Right. It's Brianna. Yeah. Which is like Brianna, but it's Brianna. Probably bri what, two, one N instead of two Ns. Right? Um, uh, whatever. Well, what, no, no, I'm curious. Is you, do you spell your name the same as Brianna and pronounce it differently? Um, I spell it B-R-I-M-A. Oh. M-A? Brima? No, B-R-I-N-B-R-I-A-N-A. -A. Hey, right. Like I said, one N instead of two. Oh, that's Brianna's two N. Yeah. What the hell what kind of name is Brianna? Uh-oh. Oh. Smoke detector. Oh. All right. Uh, All right. Brianna? Yeah? Now, we didn't hear it. It must be about it. I'm going to need you to move a little closer to the smoke detector. And don't tell me you don't have one, because I heard it. I don't have a smoke detector. Yeah, it's a move closer, closer to the one you don't have that. There's something. Look in the ceiling on the walls. You'll see a little round disc. I do not have a smoke detector. Okay. Do me a favor. Be quiet uh -huh. for a second. Then. Just, just be quiet. Hold the phone uh, away from your mouth. Just hold it up into the air. Okay. Okay, hold it up there for a second. We use your 38, aren't we? Yeah. This one, I think, must be around 50 because uh, because we didn't need... What's she doing? I don't know. Rihanna? Yeah? You there? Yeah. Hold on, hold on a second. I heard a smoke. I heard the thing. Oh, I definitely heard it. Well, how come we didn't hear it? Because it's going to be a... It's not going to be a normal periodicity in it. No, they're all they're all between thirty and forty seconds. Did you just shut a door, Brianna? Huh? Did you just shut a door or something? No, I just turned off the TV. Turn off the sounded TV. like the, the door closed. Are you standing where you were standing when you started talking to us? No. Go back to where you were when you were just began the conversation. Are you there now? Okay. Okay. All right. What part of the house are you in? In my room. You're in the room. Mm -hmm. Is this where you were when you were talking to us when we were talking about the smoke alarm? Yes. Okay. All right. But the TV was on then. It's okay. off now. Oh. Maybe something came from the TV. No, Do you, no. you live in an apartment? No, a house. You live in a house. Yeah. Is it a newer house? No. Yeah, but that could be 1993, right? Right. How old do you think the house is? Chicago? Um, three, three, it three. was built about... 40, 50 years ago. Mm hmm And uh, no smoke detector in the house, huh? Nope. Oh, well, in the house, yeah, of course, but not in my room. Okay. We'll, we'll go to the nearest one. Uh, I cannot leave my room at this. It's like 1 a.m. right here. Mm -hmm. Everyone's asleep. Mm hmm Where's the nearest one? In the hallway? Uh, I have no clue. Mm hmm Your parents not putting one in your room means they don't love you, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I'll make sure to tell them that. 
my parents not only didn't have a smoke detector in my room, they kept oily rags and uh, they let a hobo uh, play with a Zippo lighter and actually nice. while I slept. Nice. Yeah. What a coincidence! Back, in the back porch. Yeah. Made, of, made of toothpicks. Yeah. Uh, Brianna uh, Anderson, it was at a minute four. See if you can find a tape of that for us. No, it wasn't at a minute four. It was at uh, like 59. Uh -huh. I'm, I, I'm not going to stop the whole show for He's that. He's not going to stop the oh, show. Come on. I thought he'd go on your wild I thought he'd I'll, I'll play one for you if you want to hear one. I mean, if it's that important to <laughs> No, it's just driving. It drives us. Well, listen, we're like prisoners in the studio. We have to figure out ways to occupy yeah. ourselves. That's Anderson playing it. All right, so listen, Brianna. Mm -hmm. You want uh, a question? Yeah, she wants to know what the S and the M stand for, right? Yes. Yeah. Sadism yeah. and masochism. Huh? Sadism and masochism. What's that? That's what S and M stands for. So sadism means you like to do, you uh, yeah. like to do stuff to people, and the masochism part's like doing stuff to you, right? Right. Oh, okay. And um, I just want to say I was listening, and before when you were talking about the whole religion and stuff. Yeah. Know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. forgiveness and all that? Yeah. Maybe use them? Mm hmm. Whatever. Okay, she ran Sorry, out of steam right. there. I wish yeah. you could go back. <laughs> you know what I like Ooh. about You know what I love about our callers? It's like you go, uh, listen, I want you to go toward the smoke detector in the house. Uh, we don't have one. Uh, I know, you please, you have to have one. And uh, we heard one. No, we don't. You don't, there's no smoke detector in the house? No. And then five minutes later, I know we heard a smoke there. Yeah, it's not in my room. That's it. Is, is it, what, is that, was I that stupid at 14? Or you, is it, is it stupid meets combative? Yes. yes. Stubative? Yes. Stubative. It's just stubative? Stubative, yes. Like, I didn't Stumbative. say the smoke detector in your bedroom. I just said your house has no smoke? No, no smoke detector. Speaking of disgust, nah. I got to talk about the the newscast on Friday night. I saw with the, this 2020 episode about a guy getting amnesia, and he was so clearly a trauma survivor with bipolar mania. And they presented this story about this guy forgetting who his wife is, as though it's just like like on a soap, like a Gilligan's Island episode where he got hit with a coconut, and now he's ginger. It's like oh oh he forget. People want to believe, you know. You know, no one consults about what. You know, I, I'm sitting there thinking to myself. You know, what it reminded me of is that song Ruby Tuesday. Goodbye. Where, yeah, lose your dreams and you will lose your mind. Yeah. You know what happened if you lose your dreams, Adam? Hmm. You lose your mind. Yeah. I, everyone's heard, everyone knows somebody that's lost their mind because they stopped having dreams. Sure. Everybody. Sure. Yeah. Never yeah. happened. Never happened. Well, listen, hey, look, you can't, look. Hey, here's the whole thing. Here, whenever you watch the news, whenever you read an article, whenever you read the news, if it's ever about you, you know it's totally wrong. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yes. If you, any you article, anything, about anything you ever yes. read about yourself is just all. Right. You, in so, other words, if somebody's quoting you or giving a report about you, they, they're, they're if someone distorted. did a story on you, it'd be wrong. Yeah. So now everything you see on TV that isn't you, worse. Assume that it's wrong. Yeah. Assume that if that was you, it wouldn't be accurate. Right. And therefore, it isn't. Stupid. Ah. Then we've done the Jay McGraw thing, followed that, and that just, just was. Uh... Drew doesn't like uh, Jay McGraw selling nope. more books. Than no, him. I don't like that. Because his dad's Dr. Phil. I don't like that. <laughs> He's going to write a but book I, I for don't like, teens I, and how to lose weight. I don't like that the press doesn't ask questions. Ah, they're just a bunch of ass kissers. Look, listen, this is the publicist. The publicist, if they hardball them, then they don't get them next time. It's just a but it's more publicist being. The publicists are just, they're, uh, they're leeches on society. They're they're really they're they're really they're the pariahs. They're the I'd like to I'd like just to get here's what I like to do. I'd like to take all the publicists and all the attorneys and just uh, pack them into uh, one cannon and then uh, pack it with uh, ass and fire it into the ocean and just uh, be done with it. It's a much better society. No publicists, uh, no uh, no attorneys. What a utopia we'd be living in, Drew. This is just publicist crap. <sighs> uh, screw them, you David. The press, the press supposed to be. Oh, uh, yeah. I What's up? Anyway. Um, yeah. Well, I had uh, Florida or Germany for you, Adam. All right. All right. Bring our, raise our spirits. All right. It's uh, it's Germany or Florida, by the way. Well, I, I, had, a, I had a quick question, like a, like an actual love line legitimate question real quick. It's just a really yeah. quick one. Yeah. All right. Um, I just wanted to know, my, my friends and I have been arguing over this. Okay, is, is it true that, like, the term threesome and the term gangbang have two different meanings? Like, a threesome has to be two girls and a guy, and a gangbang has to be two guys and a girl? Whatever. Gangbang implies more men. Threesome could go either way. 
A gangbang oh, yeah. implies uh, multiple penis. Uh, yeah. s here, here, okay, let's break it down. We never broke this down before. Gangbang means uh, more than one Johnson. Probably more than two. Probably more than two, yeah. yeah. Because it, 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 three if, if, you, if you thought you were going to take on a gang of two guys, you wouldn't really worry about it. Right. All right. Yeah. So gang means uh, three or more. Yeah. Okay. With the penis. It's not girls. One that's vagina. Right. That's a gang bang. Uh, if you start including more vaginas, now you got an orgy on your hands. Right. That's right. Okay. And then a threesome can be of any any mixture, but um, or the same. But when I'm, although three guys going at it is uh, technically, I guess, still a threesome, but uh, in the eyes of God. But if you if a guy a brings it up, when a male brings it up to a girl, he's, he's, talking, he's, he's talking about two girls. He's talking about yeah. Almost without exception. Right. All right. Uh, Germany or Florida, make us happy. All right. Um, so I guess I'm not supposed to say where. Hold on. This Hold on. Germany or Florida. That's Pink singing the theme. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I guess it happened actually like a, like a while back. Um, there was uh, I, I guess some like political term, turmoil going on, and uh, and it became like pretty intense. Like the, like this one guy actually. Uh, Developed like a, a pretty big hatred towards uh, like members of like the Jewish race and everything, mm -hmm. and uh, it actually became like le like legalizing like the massive genocide of like like mi like millions of like Jewish people actually. Was that Florida or Germany? The, the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Where did yeah, that happen? Germany or Florida? <laughs> Most our callers are stumped. Well, wait a minute. Now this seems too obvious to be Germany. Come on, he's they, such a joke. They wanted to legalize. What do you want to do? He wanted to legalize like the, the, the genocide of uh, of millions of, uh, of Jews. Did he carry it out? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. It actually, I believe the uh, World War started over. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Thank you. I was screwing around. Yes. He's All right. Around. I'm so, I'm so well naive. done. Well done. I like I did. Thank you. Don't ever call again. <laughs> I like that. Believe me, Take Kelly Kelly center. Osborne doesn't know who we're talking about. <laughs> She's an expert in World War II. I only bring her up because uh, I was announcing that women don't know anything about war, and she uh, fought back feverishly, explaining that, uh, yes, we do. I do. I'm studying it in school. My father uh, is from England. I know all about the war. I said, okay. Who are the actors? <laughs> who, are the, who, are the, who are the good guys and who are the bad guys? Oh, please. That's not fair. It's not fair. It's like, you right, are it's the like, Goodbye. It's like saying... Uh, I know everything about cars. It's like, okay, how many wheels on a car? <laughs> oh, that's an unfair question. No, no, it's not. It's the, it's the world's easiest question. We're just, you know, I didn't ask you about the cam timing. I just asked you how many wheels on a on a regular car. Yeah, that's what that was. Unfair. No. Right. How dare you? How dare? How dare you? Listen, and then she got mad at me for laughing at her. But I, my whole thing was just don't pipe up. But then we had a woman call who was an expert military expert. Didn't know right? anything either, or knew something, but she not that much. Stuff. Here's all I'm saying. A lot of people piping up in this society about stuff they don't know. It's not like me. I know everything. I'm talking about what, the uh, incest and Latino cultures. I know what I'm talking about. You see what I'm saying, Drew? Yeah, I see what you're saying. I have data. Yeah. All right. Let's talk to... Uh, now, look. Is this person's name uh, Chevelle? Yeah. Chevelle? Yeah. Is that your name? Yeah. That's your real name? Yeah, after the car. All right. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a bad sign, boy. That's that's uh, that's serious white trash right there. I know. Your dad that's was, uh, yeah. Your dad was in the sh he's in the Chevelles. Yeah. Collects them. Huh? Thinks it was a travesty that they were discontinued. Oh, I don't know. I don't. I really those, know those that's types not of things. <laughs> still complain. That oh, you don't know your dad. Oh. No, but I know I was conceived in the back of a Chevelle. Perfect. Uh, and yeah. and. <laughs> yeah. Good yeah, thing you worked, white uh, trash. White trash. Yeah. Okay. You could have could have been in a uh, Daihatsu charade or something. I mean, it could have been worse. Yeah. <laughs> Chevelle at sixteen doesn't. And the Chevelle would have been twenty five years old. Well, Dave is a Chevelle man. And let me say this once. Let me say it all, you white trash uh, idiots out there with your stupid uh, wife beaters and your bad mustaches. I watch these uh, crappy. Uh, all I watch is car shows when I get home, and I see these jackasses over there. Oh, Chevelle, all this. They love all that American muscle. Let me just tell you something about your beloved American muscle car. Straight axles in the back. Just uh, bah, bah, drum brakes and leaf springs. Pieces of junk. 
GT40. Junk. Junk. GT40? GT40 was a pro- barely a production car. They made seven of them. They just they didn't even make them. How dare you? Wow. All that other stuff you guys get nostalgic about, though, all those Corvettes, all those Mustangs, them, there's about three of them that are nice. The rest are junk. All that Chevelle, all that stuff, all that big box, but the iron blocks and iron heads and 1950s technology, just junk, just pure junk. Please, get over yourselves. Those cars suck. Thank you, Chevelle. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm tired um, of all these idiots from Florida with their bad mustaches talking about <laughs> Mustangs and cleaning in their pants. These cars are junk. Go get in one. Go drive one. They're just, it's just junk. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, so now that you, you got that out. Okay. So your dad, your dad named you Chevelle and then split. No, my mom named me Chevelle. My mm. dad split before he even knew my mom. Well, as soon as he found my, found out my mom was pregnant, he took off. Mm-hmm. All right. What's your question? Okay. Well, I'm 16, and um, my best friend, her she, her parents know that I've been going through a lot of family troubles. Yeah. And uh, they said about because this happened about a year ago that things started getting really bad, and uh, and so they said that they would be willing to take me in as one of their ch- kids because mm-hmm. they've only got two kids. And anyway, um, but. My question is, is if I go with them, if I live with them, then I would have to call social services in order to get it legally, like them as my legal parents. Right. Yeah. But if I do that, I would be taking chances of having my other little brothers and sisters taken away from my parents. Taken away to a place of safety. Yeah, I don't want them split up, like not I'd, seeing each other. They'd rather have them together in hell. Then split apart. Well, no, because they're, they're not treated the same as I am. Yeah, they're because gonna. Well, the social services don't rush in and take everybody away. How yeah. many yeah. brothers and sisters do you have? I have two little brothers and a little sister. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah stepdad so, is the one yeah, that's criminal, you? criminal, and and stripper. That's what I hear. <laughs> is the uh, is the stepdad the one that's mistreating you? Is what? The stepdad the one that's mistreating you? Um. Well, it's kind of my stepdad, he's like an alcoholic, and my mom is just, my mom just doesn't like me. We constantly fight, like, all the time, and she's constantly saying how, like, she regretted having me and things like that. And, yeah. And I, she found out that I, you know, because I cut myself, and yeah. she found that out, and she oh. grounded me for, like, a month for finding out about it. No, and that so, kept you from cutting. Now, how old, how old is uh, little uh, Pinta Vega? Stephanie? Uh, Pinto, uh, Vega and, uh, uh, I know Pacer has a weight problem. We had to see Grandma. it coming. Grandma's a tiger. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, what are you, your other friend, your other, uh, they named after cars or? No. No. They're named after family members. Oh. <laughs> they're named after other places they were conceived, like cot, lawn, and haystack. <laughs> Couch. <laughs> uh, porch sofa. <laughs> Come here and do your homework. <laughs> Hey, uh, Chevelle, here's hey, the Chevelle, get out of there. It's fine. Hey, lounge you know, social chair. Social services were um, all for it. They, they will. Their job is to improve things, not yes. to make things worse. All right. Just go ahead. Do what you need to do. All right. And, baby, out. don't act out now. Don't get pregnant. I don't want to. I'm not I'm wa- still a virgin. I don't want Good. to. Good. Yeah. Good. I'm talking I don't want to do that. <laughs> Let me, yeah, look. Here's what you all need to do. You all need to do the exact opposite of your parents. Yeah. If you have crappy parents. Thank you. Yes, you're, you're, you need to remain a virgin for as long as you can, get good grades, get an education, and have a, a fruitful and healthy life. Yeah. Thank you. We'll be back. Hey, yo, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. All right. Tina? Yes. Um, hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, I'm clean years old. My boyfriend is just about ready to turn 33 here on Sunday. And we tried having sex tonight, and he just can't keep an erection. And it's mm. been kind of going on now for a little bit, and it just kind of hurts my feelings because... Hold on a second. You confused me a little bit. When did you first try to have sex? going on for a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, it's been going on for, like, maybe, I don't know, two, three months now. When did you first try to have sex with him? When we when did I try first having sex with him? Yeah. Oh, God. Um... So we had sex yesterday, 
And it was, Didn't she tell the story as though this was something that had just happened, and then she said it had been going on for a while now? Yeah. That's my confusion. Uh, well, stop being confused, because I knew what you meant. What does she mean? Well, she just what what she's doing is she's trying to soft sell it, like, oh, oh my goodness, this happened, and then this has been going on for some time. Right. I mean, you know, as you scratch beneath the surface, right. you realize there's a little, maybe a little more here. And she's been having some feelings about it, like uh, she's not feeling that. attractive. Tina? Yeah, that's totally true. <laughs> All right. I mean, because well, I'm it, not unattractive. I mean, I'm not like, whoa, she's, like, really hot. But I'm, like, definitely pretty good looking for, I guess, what I am. But, um... I, what are you? True. What, what am I? You? What are you? I'm, like, half Asian, half Italian. Ooh. Yeah. Baby, don't, you don't have to apologize for that. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you were nutty, but I like that. That's a good combo. Let me tell you something. The Asians, uh, they need to be cut just a little bit. <laughs> cut down. You need to step on them. I mean, cut with a little baby, baby powder. They need to cut. be stepped on. Yeah, like when you got some pure, you got some pure cocaine, <laughs> and you step on it oh my. with a little baby laxative. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. That's when you get the mixture just right. And that's you, Tina. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it's a good combo. That's that Eurasian. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, anyways, he used to smoke. I mean, it's not smoke, like snort crystal meth. And he smokes a lot of cigarettes, and he smokes pot. I don't smoke pot anymore because I get anxiety attacks from it. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that's probably the reason why he's not. That's that's at medicine. least that is at least some of the reason. Okay. Certainly, crystal can do it. He's probably still doing a little speed or something. Uh, the pot can do it. Cigarettes absolutely uh, can r progressively restrict the blood supply to the penis and ha have ultimately a profound effect on the blood supply. Yeah. What's uh, what's up with this guy? What's he do for a living? He I don't is trust a parts him. runner, which basically runner. He, he gets like things from one Auto company and he has to send it to another company. Does he physically drive it over there? Yes. Yeah, and listen, I love the way I love the way you describe things. He has to send it. No, he doesn't. Have, he doesn't send it. He schleps it. He's handed yeah. it, gets and he gets his, in his car. He gets on his, you know, on his bicycle, on his moped, yeah. and he drives it across town like like some sort of drunken mule. Yeah. That this, is guy, sort of... this guy's thirty three. I mean, this is uh, this is serious loser behavior here. Yeah, he still lives at home with his parents. Yeah. Oh yeah, my I know. God. It's really bad. I know, but I really like him. Sure, yeah. it's not the love. And, and he's a, he's no. not been, he's an untreated addict, Tina. Untreated addict. What do you got going? What's who can't, wrong with who can't you? keep an erection? What's wrong with me? I don't know a lot, I guess. Evidently, your dad was an alcoholic. No, he used to abuse me when I was little. Oh, yeah. all right. He, well, that, he's, he's different now. Like he loves you, yeah. Alcoholic. He loves wow. you. Uh, all, all abusive right. guys like this. All guy. abusive guys like him. Is this the guy the Italian one or the Asian one? He's Italian. Of yeah, of my course. son. Come here and give me a hug. <laughs> but, Tina, you, he didn't drink when he used to be abusive to you? He used to drink, but I guess right. he would just started having, like, high blood blood pressure. And All right, but like that's that. what I'm talking about. He's an alcoholic, and in his disease, he was abusive to you, and so now you're very attracted to alcoholic addicts. All right, look, this, yeah. this, this, guy, this guy is a loser. Oh, I know, I know. All right. Now, look, look, just, are you so scared to be on your own that you can't be without this guy for a few short months until you glom on to some other guy? No, I, yeah, I guess I can because, I mean, I went from a relationship that was, like, really good, and I still really liked the guy that I dumped. And I kind of yeah, you dumped him yeah, because dumped he was a, he was available. It was a, it was a real relationship. Right. You can't tolerate that. This guy's that. no good. You need a, You need a little therapy. What are you doing with your life? I work as a retail clerk at, like, a company. <laughs> at a company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, fine. And listen, it doesn't matter. You're 20. Yeah. you got Stop 20 years shot. before I'm going to screw with you. Stop and Plus, shot. you're uh, Eurasian. So that means you got, you got potential. Gab Benetton? She be Benetton? Yeah. Actually, they got all I'm those really colors stupid. over there. <laughs> what? I, I'm actually really stupid. I mean, it's pretty what? evident, right? No, 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 no. No, that's not. No. It's not a cognitive thing. Not an intellectual problem. Yeah. It's an emotional problem. It helps, though. But no, this is just uh, you, your dad screwed you over. You're attracted to the wrong guys, and that's it. It's not about being stupid. How come people can't get the fact that attraction comes from trauma? They just can't. They can't get it. They can't get their head around it. 
Mm. It's, it's nowhere in our culture. No one teaches it. No. Yeah, that's all right, Drew. It's, it's kind of frustrating, isn't it? It is, but then I, then I, you know, then I start drinking, uh, and it all goes away. Yeah. yeah. All the troubles, all my troubles melt away. Pour myself a yeah, nice glass of red wine. This will be. You're going to be like one of my. You, I, you, I got TiVo. You're, you are my Empire State Building. When it comes time to treat you, it's going to be TiVo and. Booze. I mean, it's going to be a monumental project. Forget about the booze. You will work on that TiVo. It's about seventy <laughs> hours of that each day. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I do? That's it. I, I go home, and uh, and I watch TV for about two hours, eh, about an hour, forty five minutes when I come home at night. I watch about uh, 180 hours of programming. <laughs> <laughs> I just watch like uh, I watch Modern Marvels on the uh, on the building of uh, the Golden Gate Bridge. It's an hour long show. I watch it in uh, 14 seconds, <laughs> and uh, then I switch on. I watch whole movies, watch everything. Then I watch movies on DVD. I watched uh, I watched Smoking the Bandit too the other night. It took about it took about 11 minutes. This, oh, oh, Jerry Reed singing a song. Better fast forward through that. It's about the entire content. <laughs> yeah, come on, how dare you attack my smoking the bandit movies? Abraham. Hey, hello. You're 18. Yep. Uh oh, Bakersfield. Yeah. Yeah, that's trouble. Very much. You got to think about getting out of there. We just played that. Bakersfield. I, I can't. Uh, the, somehow, is it Abraham your real name? Yeah. Abraham and Bakersfield? They're going to run you out of that town real soon. He just stopped and bar. Yeah. You're not long for that town. No, I'm not. All right, so what's up? I was just wondering how you and Drew get along outside of the show. Swimmingly. <clears throat> yeah, well, let's put it this way. Uh, we talk on the cell phone on the ride home every night for uh, 22 minutes. Because we don't do enough talking on the radio together. Yeah, I mean, you want to hear you want to hear gay. <laughs> Let me give you gay. <laughs> we leave the radio station at uh, 12 o What do you think it is? 12 02 and a half? At, at the latest. Yeah. You know, it's funny if, if we have to take a picture with somebody and get out of here at 12 04. We're angry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We, so we leave here at about uh, 12 02 and a half, maybe 12 03. Uh, get in our cars. My phone rings. And then uh, we, Drew and I speak until I get into my kitchen. Once I get in proximity of my TiVo, then of course that uh, takes, that I got my booze, my yeah. precious or my medicine, as I call it, and then my TiVo, and that's it. But uh, now, Drew, uh, I am, by the way, and uh, let this be a lesson, everybody. I don't know what what kind of lesson, but uh, <laughs> I got two partners. One is uh, Jimmy, and one is Drew, and I get along great with both of them, and still like. I mean, you know, I go to Jimmy's every Sunday for eight hours and watch football. I really enjoy hanging out with him. I really enjoy hanging out with Drew. You don't have to hate the yeah. people that are around you. you. Yeah. You can surround yourself with good people and uh, enjoy yourself. Every, Abraham, that's yeah. why you need to get out of Bakersfield. Huh? There ain't no Jimmys or Drews in Bakersfield. No, uh, you're right. There's not. All right. All right. He's, he, Abraham's lighting up the highway there, getting out of town. All right, okay. buddy. Do you guys uh, ever get in arguments outside? Have you ever done that before? No, our fights are on the air, almost without exception. We get What'd no. We get no. I'll tell you what. What we'll, we'll get into arguments about is uh, once in a while, Drew will uh, try to undermine my authority when we're uh, talking. I, here's the thing: the way stuff traditionally gets done around here at Love Line oh, yeah, is yeah. I, I threaten not to come yeah, yeah. in at a yeah. certain point, yeah. and Drew will always try to make it nice. Like when we wanted to move studios, Anderson said, "Could you push back your uh, ultimatum date mm -hmm. where you won't come in because I'm going to be on vacation?" And asshole. I said, nah, I can't do that. And Drew said, "Why can't you do that?" And I said, nah, I, "I'm because a date's a date, and that's when I stop coming in, like I did with the security guard. By the way, trying to get a security guard for eight months, cheap sons of bitches wouldn't get us one. Just walking out into a dark parking lot, walking out in the street every night." So eventually, I just said I'm not coming in after this date, and lo and behold, it's really it's great management, by the way. We just have every time you want something, uh, you have to threaten not to come in, otherwise you won't get it. But anyway, uh, Drew was uh, Drew was saying to uh, Engineer Anderson, "No, let's push the date back. Come on, Adam. Blah blah blah." Yeah. And uh, that's what Drew does. He gets in the way. He doesn't it wasn't like just Drew, though. Everyone. No, no, no. But but he's right. Oh, listen, no, no, listen. Every, every listen every every. Uh, 
three toed sloth around here wouldn't move for anything. But no, the whole Love Line team was sticking up for me, except for you. Yeah, well, that's the, that's the team that's going to die in that dump known as Westwood One. That's the team that couldn't move the goddamn show for but, a year and yeah, a half. Don't, don't, what do you mean? Wait, hang on a second, hang on a second. Anderson, team. don't. Blah, blah, blah. Don't don't personalize Anderson. What what he's actually getting onto is actually a serious problem. I have, which I'm very codependent. Very. I, I don't set limits well. And if I you know I see somebody who needs something, I'm like, okay, let's let's help that guy. Therapy, therapy, therapy. Ah uh, yes, sir. Well, better than it used to be. Drew's too good. Yeah. But in the process of being too good, it, it undermines. It, it undermines. That's right. It's not. It's not right. And I don't even know I'm doing it. And that that's where you. You somehow think I have a sinister consciousness that's oh. like operating, like, like, that's like a Stewie really inside me like. operating the controls. Yeah. Then I just start yelling at Drew. Yeah. Listen, if you're not going to do anything, just shut up. Yeah, which is fine. Yeah. See, there you go. Yeah. But uh, you're better off of me just shutting up. Yeah, yeah. To get stuff done. Yeah. No, I mean, let's try that now. All right. Ready, go. Okay. That's good. You know, I was thinking about the other day, someone was talking to me about it. Remember when your wife gave that uh, crazy Asian guy my uh, cell phone number so he could try to sell me knives? And he pan, called pan. me Pan Pan. And he called me Sunday morning at the nine o'clock. You know, once in a while you start talking about a story that happened, and there's there's ones you whack, sort of waxing poetic about or nostalgic about or whatever, and then you start telling stories and you go, "What the f was she thinking? What was that?" She gave this guy who was barely a stranger to her. I mean, she knew the guy a little bit, but not too good. And this guy was the most obnoxious man ever born. And he wanted to sell uh, Drew's wife some knives. So Drew's wife said, uh, and he probably said, who else can I sell some knives to? And she said, uh, how about uh, Adam Carolla? And he said, fine. And she said, uh, here's his cell phone number, which I now... Well, I was telling this story and getting outraged yesterday at the office. I was thinking, you know, I bet she went to Drew, and Drew gave her that uh, cell I'm phone I'm trying to number, remember if that's in which fact sounds about right. That does sound about and then right. this son of a bitch called me on Sunday morning. It was like 9-something and wanted to get together. And I was like, who is this? I don't know who this is. Oh, you don't know me. I just want to sell you some knives. And then, uh, then, the, and then I finally uh, agreed to buy some cleavers off this a-hole. And uh, the guy just turned out to be a sociopath. Let's go buy some uh, cleavers off him for like 120 bucks a piece. Let's buy one for me and one for Jimmy. And then he's, he got so bent out of shape about the fact that I wasn't buying the uh, Paul Bunyan set for eight grand. I finally told him to F off. And I wasn't going to buy his crappy cleavers. And then he went nuts. <laughs> what an idiot that guy is. Jesus Christ. And what the hell is your wife giving my cell phone number for? Do you realize how crazy out of bounds that is? Do you realize how how, how far your wife has spun out into the uh, stratosphere? Well, how about the fact that I probably how about the fact that the you number? gave her my number? You got to Drew. For, for, not, not just remember, a guy's bringing knives into your house. Yeah. Okay. Let me say this. Let me say this, please. Hey, he, look, he, was like, he was a high put in contact high school student at my kid's high school. Going no. off to Brown. Yes. Yes. Oh God. He's now Christ. now. Comes back every year and, and coaches my daughter in uh, volleyball. Keep an eye on him because they're going to open a, a knife throwing act. Your your daughter's going to be <laughs> on a piece of spinning plywood while uh, Pan Pan throws steak knives no, at her. That's just Pan now. That's just Pan. Jesus Christ! Like I hit him with a frying pan. <laughs> like driving me nuts. All right, but anyway, here's my point, Drew. Your wife's a little nutty. Fine, that's your thing. You dig it. Fine, that's good. I can see that. Everyone's got their own thing going on. That's fine. You, though, being the sane one of the two, have to realize, like, you need, like, a safe word for society. You know what I mean? Like, hey, my wife's a little nutty. She doesn't really have boundaries. She likes to just sort of steamroll. She does her own thing. Fine. That's her thing. You're attracted to it. And like I said, I can see that. But you're the one who has to slide in as the voice of reality when she starts wanting to get Pan Pan my cell phone number so you can sell me knives Sunday morning. But I don't have good boundaries either, and that's the problem. Yeah. But no, no, no. But that's see, you're the sane one. I, I know. I need the sane one of the group. Well, we that's where you got to start thinking. Both huh? Both of us need a better boundaries. Right. Well, I don't, you're about? Listen, I don't. I don't. I don't blame her. Like with her, it's like if, you know, animal escapes from the zoo. You don't blame the animal. You got to build a bigger fence. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, look, she does her thing. She does her thing. You know what I'm saying? No. She does her thing like 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 uh like the the animal at the zoo does their thing. They do their thing. You're not gonna stop her from doing her thing. You know it thing. hurts her very much hearing you talk about her like this. Well, she someone should say something. She should hear this. She does her thing. What does that mean? I mean, she's 
she's got energy. She's going to do her thing. I, I don't, I don't look. I and I here's what here's what I'm saying. You like lap dogs? No, no, no. Here's what I'm saying. I'm saying I don't want to I mean this. I don't want to launch off into too big a tap. What I'm saying is, is I appreciate your wife for the kind of person she is. She's fun to hang around with. She's got her good qualities. I can see why you're attracted to her, and I see all that stuff okay. in her. I also see that that she said in her ways, for for lack of a better term. Yes, we all should strive to be better, but I don't. I'm not going to put that kind of pressure on her. I look at her as she's her. That's her. She does what she does. And, and, and we I, all know people that are this way. By the way, you love them. Yeah. You hang out with them, but there's people that just do what they do. Right. Right. Which I'm is pretty I'm much I'm everybody. Put your wife into that category. All right. But that's you, my problem too, because I do uh, what yes, I do too. You yeah. do, but I think you have more potential for lateral movement. Okay. And at least should have more. Okay. I hold you to a slightly higher standard. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay. And and uh, for someone who's uh, been through as much, read as much, and done as much as you, you should have a little little light going off in your head when she's asking uh, for my cell number so uh, Pan Pan can uh, sell me a knife knife. <laughs> yes? Uh, cleaver, cleaver. All right. We're going to take a break, and we're going to take calls okay. after this. Hey, yo, it's Loveline, I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew, Alex. What's going on, Adam? Twenty. Yeah, I have a question uh, for Dr. Drew. Yeah. It's concerning. Uh, yeah, I heard about this uh, product on on sports radio. It's called uh, Therapin, and uh, supposedly it, it makes your uh, your penis bigger. Oh, well, it must be true then. Yeah, you heard on sports radio. talk. It has to be true. No, actually, the reason why why I have like I'm curious about it is because uh, you know uh, they claim that uh, it's been FDA approved, and uh, basically uh, you you do some exercises when your penis is not erect. We had this guy call. We had a guy call last night about this. Yeah. Look, here's the thing. If you want to dangle a weight from the end of your dork, it will make it longer eventually. Yeah, well, it's, actually, it's not a weight. I mean, it's exercise that, that yeah. you do. We know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, 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 we you, know. You, it's called tugging off. Okay. Yeah, let's, don't don't bother with any of this nonsense. So it is. It, 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 just please. Everybody. The, the guy last night had, had a larger penis that wouldn't get hard. If you recall, that was the call last night. So it's not it's not necessarily good for you. Yeah. Wouldn't get completely too messy anyway. Speaking of uh, blowhards, uh, let's turn on some sports radio. Maybe you should get the ultimate blowhard. You yeah, guys that have to start every sentence with, I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth, and I'll be honest with you. Peyton Manning is in the top five of NFL quarterbacks playing in this league right now. That's right, I said it. I'm honest with you. I'm open phone lines. Oh, shut up. What the, you ever tune into these guys? Yeah, I know. I don't like it. What are they talking about? I don't know. I, I, I'm not one of those guys that could listen to sports talk very much. I, 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 always, I always love it when, uh, well, first off, I love it when the guys refer to the team as we. Yeah. I love it when the fans are we. And then uh, I love the guys who call in and want to rearrange the uh, lineup when they go, uh, yeah, we're uh, we're feeling pretty good about our victory over Cleveland Monday night. I think if we took uh, Isaac Bruce and moved him out into the flanker position, and then uh, started Warner, we could. It's like what, we, uh, you live at your mom's house <laughs> and play uh, uh, play with yourself most of the day, and and then the rest of the day spent playing uh, electronic battleship. What do you mean we? As soon as they lose, though, they always say they. Yeah. Well, what happened with the Rams? What happened with your Rams? Well, they lost. They didn't execute. They didn't listen to what I said. And then they win. It's we again. <laughs> and they just sit around talking about bizarre hypotheticals over and over and over again. And then the sports talk starts where they, it, the baseball season ended 10 minutes ago. They're always talking about, we may get uh, Pedro Martinez during the off season. You know? It's all this off season discussion they're having. This, the, the goddamn season's not going to start for three months. Really? Is anyone? Can anyone care about a season that has like 160-something games in it? Really? Pivotal game 28 out of the 168? 163 or 167 or whatever? Oh, Jesus Christ. Listen, everyone, just play the sports and watch some football on the Sundays. You don't have to call in the goddamn radio shows. Jason? Yeah, this is Jason. Hey, how are you guys doing? Hey, you're 20. What's up? 
Um, all right, let me tell you the problem, and then I'll ask you my question. Uh, the problem is uh, it takes me anywhere from, uh, I'd say, 30 minutes to an hour to uh, to finish when I'm having sex. Um, I'm going to be totally honest with you, Drew. I'm saying Jason's taking too long to come. There, I said it, okay? I'm going to be up front with our, our callers tonight. All right, I'm glad we got that. Right, thanks, way. Jason. Line one. <laughs> So that one too. They gotta punch everyone out, right. go everywhere every ten seconds because right. they don't have anything to say. Joanne, yeah, you're with the guys. Hey, let me be honest with you. Teacher stares at you. I'm gonna be honest with you. That's out of line. Thanks, Joanne. Let's uh, hop the line. Uh, let's go to the hotline. Emily. Hey. Yeah, line three. You and your friend began boozing at age fourteen. I don't condone. Let me be honest with you. I'm gonna be straight out front. I'm gonna say this, Drew. I don't care what anyone says. Not not appropriate for fourteen year olds to be alcoholics. There you go. You heard it. I said it. And we're gonna stand by it. I know I'm gonna get flack for it. It's the other thing too. This imaginary flack. Right. Yeah, because because uh, it's so important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're uh, you're starting Ricky Williams in your fantasy football league. You're gonna get a lot of flack. <laughs> what the hell are you? Are you? How old are you guys? You're adult males, are you not? Jason. Yeah. <clears throat> Forty-five minutes, half hour to six. Oh minutes. yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, are you on medication? No, no, no. This isn't even. You know, this is just uh, the beginning. The the question is. Uh, Am I doing anything that could hurt the uh, the woman, like in the long run? Like yes, it's um, not going to. Yeah. Yes, you, you can. Could, you could blow a hole out out the back of her lower spine. You certainly it can irritate the heck out of things, and uh, yeah. I guess could predispose to well, certainly urinary tract infections. And uh, again, I need to ask some questions. Any medical problems? No, not at all. Um, and how long does it take you by when you're by yourself? Uh, probably like ten minutes, fifteen minutes. 10 minutes. I so, mean, when I'm by myself, I mean, it. Uh, I don't just start out of nowhere. You know, I'm already pretty. Uh, Pretty excited, you know what I mean? When you're by yourself. Yeah, like uh, I'd be, you know, watching some porn or something and getting excited, so then I'd crack yeah. one off. Yeah, yeah, but uh, 15 minutes ain't cracking one off. That's yeah, dragging that, that'd be one. Long, off. 15 minutes. I'd say somewhere around 10. Isn't that what I? Okay. Well, you need to apply the Corolla method. What the time honored Corolla method of? Uh, That's it. Yeah. Of masturbation. If sex is good, but it's not the real thing. Yeah. I, so bring around sex to the real see thing. See if you can shave a. Uh, few minutes off that masturbation but and then whatever technique you use yeah get in that position yeah. all right we'll take a break we'll be back well that's it the best of love line which after all is better than love line because it's the best i want to thank uh, everyone who made the show possible and say until next time this is adam carolla for dr drew saying mahalo